Because if you think about how we keep returning towards these archetype, archetypical identities of our own road of evolution of consciousness, I mean, the fact that we talk about some of the ideas that were implicated into our social environments, our families and friends, and they called us crazy or laughed at us. And then those are wounds, but yet it's a cipher. It's a circle, if you will. We keep reaching this evolution of self, of its own consciousness, that kind of leads us back to kind of where we started, right? I mean, in well, a way. It's all about consciousness. I mean, in every way. So if there's an archetype of self within the personality constructs that all live within the self, I mean, I'm starting to realize, like, there's the sexual fucking maniac that lives in us all, you know, the madman, the depressed little fucking worry ward, or the person who's afraid to go anywhere, and then there's the love bug, the superstar. That's what it is. We gotta feed the superstar. You know? That conscious entity. The one who needs to be confident in his own self. The work that he has submitted within his self in the world that he's laid upon himself with uh, on the outer construct. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, right now, there's there's a you that's uh, making patches, right? And you have a you have a motive, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So is that not a person that's kind of like feeding his own conscious participation towards what he's trying to put out into the world and hoping a, a, or a sense of return? Or they say if you want to reach a level of success, you're gonna have to sacrifice a part of yourself. I think that part of yourself is the people that we attach to for their validation their support system no one's helping us who's helping us no no fuck no one <clears throat> check out this piece i gotta show it to you i just finished it last night it actually looks fucking sick oh yeah yeah that's the one i made for you It's really tight, too. I mean, yeah. you can wear that yeah. all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice, huh? Cool. So, yeah, let's talk. Let's uh, you want to look up some shit on the flood or what? The what? The mutt. What have you been getting a lot of your work on the mud flood scene? Oh, shit. Fucking. Okay. I don't know. Can I send you that? Yeah, send me some stuff. I'll look it up on here. It's tapped in. So we're tapped in to a computer, a cell phone, and a tablet. All working coincidentally together. Go ahead and send me a message. I'll tap Mom, into you. Daddy. Yeah, are you gonna eat that pop? No. All right, here. Let's see. Where is this guy at? Here it is. Mom. Skip that out. Share that video. Chats. I'm basing the shadow, the one who feels the obligation to be so responsible for things. And not realizing that in that level... Yeah, here's the guy that pointed out all this shit to me. I watched just one of his fucking videos, and I'm like, holy... I've fuck. actually seen videos what like this. Your kitchen I've seen I this information, hey, this work, Pila, this guy. You you I've seen this guy. At Pila, work... So right now, just for credit purposes and allowing me to be able to use the credibility of other people and point out their work that their avatar, their archetype is putting out into the universe is John Levi. Subscribe to this account. He's got 176,000 subscribers. This video was actually 
published April 17th, 2019. It's funny how right around March 22nd was when I released my video about the conscious upgrades of consciousness and how things were being done. And now we have within ourselves uh, other people during the same time, not too shortly after, between March 22nd and April 17th, 2019. John Levi, this episode, we will look into the city of Michigan, Indianapolis, and the mysteries involving what appears to be... Shit around the Great Lakes is crazy. You know, that's interesting, because even in Canada, the Great Lakes go into, and there's some, uh, yeah. my oh, friend... Canada's got some crazy <laughs> shit up there. Yeah. I my... bet you, if you started talking to your little Canadian girlfriend there, she lives right down in the city. She could be checking out some of the shit. You know, you're, you're right. Maybe she'll watch the video and get updated on it. Uh, I try not yeah. to disclose anybody. While well, she's a girl, she is my friend. She's a girlfriend. <coughs> she's a girl, so she's got the capability of getting into buildings without any kind of hassle. You're right. She could use her seductive tendencies and uh, her power as being a woman to be able to get what she wants and to investigate and be a journalist on her own, to be more of yeah. an infiltrator and, you know, actually, uh, you know, record the times now. What's going on? Everybody should be recording this in their progress of self. And in fact, me and you should go out there the best that we can to get out there in the street, start uh, checking out our communities. All she's got to do is get a hold of the historical society and they'd be more than willing to bring her around and show her shit. They love that stuff. You're looking up the history, but you don't tell them what we're actually looking for. Well, you have an agenda. Like, what I would like to do is have a point made by me and then go in there and just kind of, so I know what I'm looking for, but I don't know if I'm going to find it. The fireplaces. You'll notice the fireplaces seem to be probably a technology. I mean, they're just incredibly built shit. Well, so all these houses were hooked up with electricity and shit. They're not like they, they didn't have electricity. They had electricity. This is the tech. I don't know what it looks like, but this is the technology you're looking for. Iron, rod iron, fucking, they, all those fucking lightning rods in the old fucking buildings. But nowadays, no, no buildings need a lightning rod. Why is that? You know what's funny is I'm finding the same thing that happened to me when I discovered this information before was a sense of where I, 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 have, I find it hard to give a shit. But this is a product of history. This is the Great Reset. Let's go ahead and talk about this. Um, I don't know key measures of it, but I will say that within the descriptions and the comment sections... Um, I'm from Detroit, and my great grandparents have been here since the late 1800s, and they probably they were probably reset people. He says I have some interesting black and white pictures of the city. Check out Bell Isle in Detroit. It has an interesting Tartarian foundation and architecture. So there was a place called Tartarus. I remember now, Tartarus. Yes, exactly. So Tartarus. Um, this is all like basically falling back with the, the Bible and uh, people that had taken over a lot of B Babylonia. The, the European world kind of taken over, um, you know, really the, the Zionist dude and the Khazars and the people from, you know, the Caucasus. Because they, they call us Edomites now, white people. But when you take on the Holy Ghost, you're no longer a part of a race anymore. You're not a genealogy. You're not a Jew. You're not a Gentile. You're not a Greek or anything. You are now an Israelite. In the name of the Bible and the Holy Spirit of Yeshua. Okay? And it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. So, um, with that being said, uh, that's where I think that's the reason why they enforce these belief systems from Roman authority still. And Egypt and uh, Babylonia. But... Let's go ahead and keep going. Welcome. And today, we're going to have a little look at the city of Detroit, Michigan. I love this guy's voice. It was settled in 1701 by French colonists. Founded as a New France fur trading post. Industrialization drove it 
into becoming a world-class industrial powerhouse and the fourth largest American city by 1920 due to the auto industry. It held that standing through the mid 20th century. The region grew initially based on the lucrative inland and Great Lakes. Say that again. All the cars come from Detroit. See, this architectural design you'll find in places like Woonsocket, Rhode Island. You'll find in uh, Providence, Everywhere Rhode Island. Across the world, man. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Everywhere. dude. Yeah. Connected fur trade. Based on continuing relations with influential Native American chiefs and interpreters. Oh, there we go, right there. That's the stuff that I like to hear. The British census counted 2,000 people in Detroit in 1760. 2,000 people. But the population dropped to 1,400 by 1770. So I'm going to stop this as we go in for a second of kind of describing what my interpretation now is of the evolution of consciousness is really re-identifying the self between its divinity and its relationship between God, Adam, Noah, all the sons, and re-identifying the self and knowing the self deeply within. I got a Gnostic Bible that talks a lot about how Jesus wants you to know yourself. How to really truly know all things is to know thyself. And we will also discuss more things in full detail on this channel of doing uh, real truths of when it comes out of these Gospels of the Gnostic text. But we won't do that right now because as we move forward and, and kind of cover in, uh, these, these half-truths and finding the full truth behind the history that's eradicated. Because it's, it's not history, it's now the mystery. History is his story, and right now history is written by the winners, and our children are being taught lies. They don't have even modicums or little particles and scintillas of truth. They, they need people like us to keep it going. So, to me, the evolution of consciousness is one knowing who they really truly are, that you even are the government. You are the enemy within that's turning on yourself. That's why the government's getting so big. If we keep turning on ourselves and not knowing ourselves, then we won't know our divinity our divine righteous obligation as a human being between the mind of God that is all of man, okay, and how this actually pertains towards our purpose here on earth. So um, I think this information is significant in reminding us as who we are. Okay. Didn't that guy just say the During population the 19th dropped? Century. What? He just said the population dropped. They had 2,000 people, and then they lost, like, fucking four I'm going to back that up a little bit. 1920. Due to the auto industry, it held that standing through the mid-20th century. The region grew initially based on the lucrative inland and Great Lakes connected fur trade, based on continuing relations with influential Native American chiefs and interpreters. The British census counted 2,000 people in Detroit in 1760. 1760? 2,000 people. 2,000. But the population dropped to 1,400 by 1773. 1770. During the 19th century, Detroit grew... Okay, we just read off the There's Constitution. We just talked about ratifications of the amendments. Uh, here we go. This is what's going on here. Holy fuck sticks, bro. Check this out, too. I will. I want this to be noted and recorded. Is that in the back of this Constitution that I picked up here, right in the back it says, uh, In the first Constitution, the Articles of Confederation by Thomas Paine, February 14th, 1776. So they just said between the early 1700s leading into the late 1700s, okay? Remember, these people were working with Native Americans. Who are they? Okay, the Moors and shit. Listen what we're talking about. These are just titles. These guys were tribes, okay? Uh, look up the lost books. So, here, we're going to listen to this again, but he they says... Probably, they probably own these buildings and shit, too. Look, it says it right here. 
and the articles, the first constitution, the first constitution, the articles of confederation, we have it in our power to begin the world over again. A situation yeah. similar to the present hath not happened since the days of Noah until now. What does that mean? A flood? This is it. This the is birthday it, of a new world is at hand. That's from Thomas Paine, February 14th, 17th. They're trying to let you know a secret right here in this copy the of this order, constitution. Right there. That is, it's on the bill. The new world order. It already happened. Check this out. The British census the counted British. 2,000 people in Detroit in 1760. 1760. So the British census. Why is there a British census here in America, by the way? Are we still a crown colony? Hint, hint. 2,000 people. But the population dropped to 1,400 by 1773. 1773. During the 19th century, Detroit grew into a thriving hub of commerce and industry. After a devastating fire in 1805, they devised a street plan similar to the design of Washington, D.C. Monumental avenues and traffic circles were planned to fan out in a radial fashion from Campus Martius Park in the heart of the city. This was intended to ease traffic patterns, and trees were planted along the boulevards and parks. Detroit was referred to some as the Paris of the West for its architecture and Washington Boulevard, recently now electrified slow. by Thomas Edison. Now it's a <laughs> and here's a little look at a Chauncey Memorial Gate that was constructed in 1894. And a little look at the plan of the town of Detroit. And it looks like a star fort in 1792. Really amazing. 1792. Very interesting star fort. I know John And Levi. a very interesting layout to the town. I've been following him on and another channel. And here's a little depiction of the plan for the city following the fire of 1805. Really amazing Inspired. configuration. And indeed, very Washington, D.C.-like. Look at that! And this little part appears to be where we saw that star fort. And here's a depiction in the 1880s, a bird's <laughs> eye view showing about three square miles of the central portion of the city of Detroit, Michigan. And I always love this artist. I'm not sure if it's always the same artist that does these bird's eye views, but really fascinating. Usually showing the layout of the city and very interesting to get a bird's eye view in this time period and very similar to what we see in many of these old depictions spires everywhere and this very image alone does not seem to be a small town of fur traders and really not even looking like a city that has been burnt down, but rather a completed city that has been laid out in a highly sophisticated fashion that we would expect Beautiful of any modern bro. city. Where's and again, the building the style of the old world. And here's a little look in Whoa. 1865, a little... I find it to be interesting how all of a sudden Oh, the, a whole town and city just gets burned down. And then it's rebuilt beautifully? No. Fiction. And again, a city... Look at Portland, mate! ...looking much more advanced yeah. than the people Congress and their Street. means of transportation and these light yeah. posts. Old and very interesting. We saw this in a... 
another video that I made with a, what looked like an angel, but rather mounted sideways. I'm not really sure. Perhaps a cross, but it doesn't seem so. And pre putting flags on the Antiquitech. Here we see it in its probably original look. And clearly inheritors or reset people. And we have painting on the building, the claiming of the buildings, and the churches, the Catholic Church. This and makes sense. This now. is a really interesting little museum in Detroit. The Detroit Museum's most beloved signature exhibit, located in the basement of the museum. The streets of old Detroit. In the 1840s, Detroit was a small town of simple buildings and small shops, with a population of about 9,000, leaving the fur trade behind to become a major commercial center in the western wilderness. New transportation methods, namely canals, steamships, and trains, hastened the development of the city. The city roads were often dirt and mud, but main thoroughfares featured cobblestones. In the 1860s, there were 163 manufacturing businesses that employed more than 2,000 men. 14 hardware stores, 7 clothing stores, 8 silversmiths and jewelers, 8 druggists, 3 bookstores and 4 hotels. Okay. In the 1860s, 4 hotels. So, you know, this little narrative of 4 hotels and 3 bookstores and 14 hardware stores and 2,000 men that were employed does not really seem to match this architecture and this architecture. Hmm. And here we have the old train station and I found this really fascinating and out of commission. You know what? He's making a valid point here. Have you ever seen the Boston train station? Right across the street is a statue of Christopher Columbus. Fucking huge, bro. Huge. When you walk through there, there looks like there to be Olympian gods. All inside there. The architecture there is fucking phenomenal, bro. And it almost makes you wonder, like, where did this come from? This long? Like, why are we copying these, uh... Why are we copying these kind of red tricks of Olympian gods? In fact, I have a video on this channel of where I had, um... Well, I was at the train station, and uh, let me see if I can find the title of the video. Because my channel, go into the videos. It was uh, a while ago, too, uh, before. You still there? You are the meaning of life. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it right there. You are the meaning of life. Yep, I think it's the one where it says you are the meaning of life. So. Old train station. Train and stations. really amazing yeah. old world architecture and are already out of commission and an old world architecture but yet very industrial and that's what we find with this city of Detroit and we see a city and a narrative of this booming town and then in a very short time, within our lifetime, a degradation of this city. Yes. And yes. yet, 
these ruins are everywhere and these signs of an ancient people and an ancient brick building people and there's no reason for this type of brickwork and architecture and building to take place only to be abandoned and fall into disarray and ruin in a short amount of time and nobody builds like this anymore this is some of the finest brickwork that can be seen this is amazing and this has been used as a parking lot according to the narrative according to the story and now a parking lot in ruins and if it's not obvious that this was not a parking lot and that this is much older and hence the reason wow. it's fallen into That's ruin awesome. and very interesting you know, we can see underneath the columns here the industrial remains of Detroit and Indianapolis. Indianapolis. So when you think about this, yeah, this is some definitely some key information that then leads me to other areas. Yeah. It seems like the, the Great Lakes area, man, seems to be like a hot spot for this kind of shit. Like, there's something definitely going on over there. I mean, what the fuck is going on in Canada? What, recently? Ever. <laughs> well, you've got to talk... You've got to actually talk to Canadians to see what's going on in Canada. Canada. You're saying they got buildings like this, too, uh, out in the middle of nowhere. Out in the fucking middle of nowhere. History is not what they say. The truth about who really worked the plantations in colonial times. Americans, America's Forgotten Slaves by Curamio Ahu. Curamio Curam. Caremio, Caremio, Ku, Ramio, Kurimio, or whatever. He's got a lot of goals. Well, what I see is happening now is this. Because I like being in the now. This is crucial information to connecting dots of who we are and how men have become victim to their own self. Generational curses are upon us. We're being born into this. We need to trust our intuition, face our shadow within. The more that we go deeper within our own self, we'll face the past and the things that have been done to us, and it'll reveal things that are necessary so we can see the liar for who he really is. And we can even let him know that we know that you're a liar. And we forgive you, but we're not going to follow the spell anymore. We're going to break the spell. So... People, the nation, in their communities, because they are the community, need to start holding themselves accountable, go to the government, let them know that they're fired, hold them accountable, take the power back, let other nations know, the governments, and the people, that the American people do not consent to this war. Anyone who does is being brainwashed. 
and they literally believe a narrative of a lie plugged into something almost like a religion. Okay? But the reality is, is that most people don't want to fight other people. They don't want to go to war with other nations based off what governments have done behind the people's back. Most people have gone to work every day not realizing that the ones that they elected have sold them out. So, if people believe and resonate with this, we need to figure out a way to bind together and take responsibility to either impeach these people or figure out ways to be a part of where we can write bills and legislative powers that can be met for the people. In fact, the Bible itself is a treaty. The Bible itself is a contract. The Bible itself is an edict. It's a, it's a, it's well, a contract. the Constitution, they're talking about an inheritance. An inheritance. That's why the government buildings are owned by the people, right? The inheritance. Well, they're trying to usurp that with the presumption yeah. of law. Yeah, exactly. If you look up the word prayer in a Black's Law Dictionary, it says the request contained in a bill in equity that the court will grant the process aid or relief which the complainant desires. Also, by extension, the term is applied to that part of the bill which contains this request. Under modern rules practice, the pleader does not pray for relief, but rather demands it. Here's the prayer for relief. That portion of a complaint, more properly called demand for relief, and a civil action which sets forth the requested relief or damages to which the pleader deems himself entitled. This is a requisite element of the complaint. So a prayer is where the government's supposed to meet your demand for relief. So whenever they write a bill, they're passing bills for relief of their own. They're meeting prayers of what they want. Of these people yeah, like corporations yeah. and all these things. Why why do we have the military industrial complex getting fifty billion dollars out of they get fifty percent of most of our taxes? Who are they protecting? We're in some trying times right now where we can sit down the road towards the vibration of love and eat the Kool-Aid while realizing that just like the summer of love. We all woke up, but nobody wrote anything in the law. Nobody established themselves. Governments went in there, rewrote the Constitution, and then wrote it as a legislative Constitution. It represents them, the democracy, not the people. So, yeah. we need to reverse that somehow. Um, The evolution of consciousness, or let the ship crash and burn. Well, it seems like there's a big deterioration. I mean, you look at Detroit, it was once a nice place, and now it's a shithole. And that's with all these places. Even me. All this infrastructure, all these places, they just deteriorate. It's all the places that started with the actual republic and the fruitation of what it meant to be an American. Because Maine was actually Massachusetts, which was known as Massachusetts. And these are all Native American territories. Then when the colonists came here during the Protestant movement to escape the clutches of Britain, Rome, read the Declaration of Independence. All right? Yeah. It was to leave tyranny and to establish a, a government that they knew the laws by the Magna Carta because they, they didn't have anything to kind of establish a law by. So they used their um, precedents. That's why they call it a patent law. Like um, 
in order to be a lawyer, you have to get a license to practice. So a license to practice means that they originated the law, so they patented the words. So they kind of look at the way that we started this country under that same foundation, but it had loopholes based off the ideas of contract and equity. The, 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 it says in the Constitution that we have unlimited power to contract. That's where the lawyers came in and started creating a new Constitution based off that. Off that loophole. Uh, yeah. And then so now, instead of being a jurisprudence, which is the right to exercise law... You have to have a license to practice legality, illegal and illegal. <clears throat> and they say that the UCC is where the common law, the constitution of each state and the law of the land married into the UCC of where statute and acts became law. That's not true, but this is all word magic now. What is? What if, during the building of the White House, George Washington wasn't laying the cornerstone, but pulling it out? There's a lot of esoterics to this. They say the original cornerstone isn't down there. It's actually on display. So he did pull it out. See what I'm saying? He didn't come to fucking establish it. He came to destroy shit. They say the seal of the United States has a secret meaning behind it that this nation is a nation of sinners. It's designed for the sinner. Because yeah. if Jesus came to redeem us of our sins, that means that you have a right to commit a crime based off how you're going to do it, right? So, if they knew prophetically that this was the, the, the beast, the second beast, that is going to act as, uh, you know, for prophecy, yeah. okay? Then how could you get a nation to that is a free society based off Christian principles to eventually turn in on itself, especially if you knew prophecy? You knew prophecy. In fact, this is in that video that I made, The Mind of the Beast. When you get to the second half, it talks about this stuff. It talks about... <laughs> Everything I'm talking about in more detail. And I definitely yeah. recommend anybody to look up Walter Veith from Crete to Malta. All six versions. There's like six. It's a series of like six hours worth of information. Gold. Might even be uh, nine hours. But okay. if I'm right about this, then they would have replaced the cornerstone with their symbolism. Which is masonry and yeah. Luciferianism. And in fact, if you look at the back of the dollar bill, they're saying that you're supposed to be the one to go be the one at the top of the cornerstone. So you, you yeah. have, yeah, that's what they say. It's you who needs to put yourself on there, you know? So maybe that's what we need to do and understand. That's why... Uh, a lot of this stuff was supposed to go to law and um, how to free yourself as the secured party and allow ourselves on this channel, which I'm plugged into other channels, is to um, learn law to its fullest capacity. How to become the banker. How to become the government. How to become the insurance company based off the bond of your own social security number and the equity that's attached to that estate that's now being levied as a negotiable instrument and a bond a note you're you're now being used to then create federal reserve credit so you're a creditor to this nation but they got you flipped as a debtor go to work pay taxes do all these things every dollar is actually 
um, 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 an account that was established and then closed. That's how they get all these stimulus packages out. And it's all these accounts that are pushed out into the system. So when you're making money, these are all dead accounts. Um, it's not good. And they're also a promissory note. A promissory note to pay back debt. Wow. They fucked us hardcore. Then you got your parents. You need to go out there and get to work. Go out there and make some money. But who are they trying to pay? Let's check this out. When you read that definition on war, it clearly identifies why we have never gotten any proper remedy, equity, or justice in these courts. Because they're not really courts. The courts are all closed to a person who is in revolt. Revolt. You can only gain access to the court when you basically revoke all of the foreign contracts. So what we need to do is go back to our driver's license and close those accounts. Okay, because that's opened up with your birth certificate and your social security number to ask for permission, not a right. And it's the one that they created so that they can have subject and jurisdiction over you from the 14th Amendment. Because when they created that birth certificate, they made you a fake person. That then they created, it says, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. And this was ratified June 13th, 1866 and 1868. So this is right around the time of the Great Reset, the mud flood, all the destruction of all these cities and all these things. And think about another thing, too. You got the Greeks all lived in city states. So they were probably some of the first people that inherited these buildings. It was the Assyrian kings that took the Macedonians, okay, and brought them over to a place called Arsareth, which was America. And this is the place where they came and uh, the 10 tribes were taken, remember, because there was 12 tribes, two tribes left behind, Judah and Israel. Israel fell, and um, if it wasn't for Judas and Maccabees helping with Antiochus, going against Antiochus Epiphanes, okay, and reminding them of the Feast of Dedication. And so they started to keep it, and that's right around the time that Jesus came. It's right around this time. And they weren't called Greeks, they were called Macedonians. And these other Greeks were a different tribe of people that uh, conquered, and I think it was from... Alexander the Great, remember, the fucking library of Alexander, bro. <laughs> it says in prophecy, four notable kings will take down their own king, which was Alexander, okay? Once they did this, Rome popped up, and by that time now, the Jews were under rulership because the Jews were Judah of Herod. And this is during the time when Jesus came. And then they killed him, and then it wasn't too long after, 321, Constantine initiated Sunday law, fucking started killing anybody that worshipped on a Sabbath day and believed in Jesus Christ. Okay? They separated the Judo-Christian because the Jews denied Christ. And in fact, the Jews to this day do. You can't be a Jew and still be a Christian at the same time. So, but in order to be a Christian, you have to follow all the same principles and celebrations and feasts as the actual Jews do. So what they did was divide a religion. They divided the belief system from the actual principles of what it means to be, I don't know, what? 
the marriage between Israel, the, between Deuteronomy, between, uh, what was it also? Deuteronomy, Jeremiah, yep. And I think it goes in Ezekiel, but then one of the last ones was Hosea, and then going into Micah, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, and then the New Testament comes in. Now, the New Testament didn't exist until it allowed itself to write itself and manifest into existence. That's why it was all prophesied in the Old Testament to then be prophesied in the New Testament. Make sense? So it was manifested from the Old Testament into the New Testament, which is why the scriptures are so sound and significant because it's the proof that Jesus really came and God fulfilled his covenant, which is the proof that Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. And then anybody who believes in that now becomes established back into the marriage and the covenant of Israel again. Because Israel back in Deuteronomy became perverted. It started following Old Testaments. It took on titles. It believed that it had to be a part of the world. It took on money and different things. And just like the marriages and the bullshit that we see today. I mean, I just showed you today in the last thing about a legal marriage and a lawful marriage. Did we just not talk about that? Yeah. Yeah! This is deep stuff. Deep. Plus, so, plus, all these buildings look like fucking giants live there. Huge fucking doorways. That's a, another sign. They have these fucking where you reach up to open the door. It's like another four feet taller than you. It's interesting you're talking about that because I came across some information. That was nice. So fucking uh, the killing of the fucking. The Giants. I mean, that's in the Bible, too. Where did I write that down? Oh, here it is, right here. Anu equals the heavens, and Yah, Anu, is us. Gad equals fortune, Loki equals luck, not a name. So, the Anunnaki is the Anoki, Enki, also Yah, the house of water. Okay, so I started to look at these, uh, the Enochian, Khan equals happy, the Enochian, An, Anu, Ani, I am happy walking in the sky. Anywho, this is supposed to be of the Nephilim that fell and made it and created the giants. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll get you cup. They say a lot of these giants actually were the gods and that's why a lot of people want to be fit and represent these bodies of a physique as the gods because that's what yeah. we try to aspire to be does it make sense so it would yeah. only make sense that a lot of our temples and things that we made were for the gods if they come these giants they walk through it's for them big mighty renowned this makes sense that's why I'm saying it, because it's kind of correlated with what you're talking about, with the cross connection between the past and how these ancient beings fell down, and we started building everything with these big, giant, huge doorways. And for all we know, we they did it. I'm gonna play a little bit of this while I make some coffee. Request to be repatriated back to as a national back to the nation. Then they have to open the courts up to you. The national courts. There it is. Just. So it's not a matter of finding the right door to go into the court. We have to have the right status. Yeah, but we have to know who we are. But see, nobody knows really who they are. And they never knew that they were in a state of civil war between the United States and the United States. So, I got a question. I got a question. Okay. okay. Yo! Patrick, how, 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 I mean, if they know this war is going on, why haven't they stopped it? He just proved it. The 11th Amendment. He just proved the 11th Amendment. I just said the 11th Amendment. He just said that we were at war with the United States. Did he not? I'm going to back it up a little bit. Pay attention. 
30 seconds back. Yes, we have to know who we are. We have to know who we are. See, nobody knows really who they are. Son of a bitch. And they never knew that they were in a state of civil war between the United States and the United States. The United States and the continental United States were at war. Okay? Remember, the civil war never ended, bro. It never ended. Ever. We've been at 400 years of slavery and war. I am a slave to the same exact status that black people were supposedly freed and slaved. And who are the black people? What's really funny is if you read Deuteronomy 28, okay? Which I've covered this in the true Israelite. I've covered this in other videos in the past, you know? But um, if you read Deuteronomy... 28 very carefully he's basically saying that you guys are going to be slaves if you don't listen to god's word where's god live inside here right so the more that we fall from our own self we fall into bondage so slavery was something well known in the bible are you following me No. you can't take away slavery uh you're either a slave to god or a slave to someone else Slave to your own vices. Slave, dude. Anywho, my point that I'm trying to make is that even in Deuteronomy, it says that we're going to fall into bondage. Well, because of the fact that this was um, based off more biblical precedents of understanding that there's slaves and servants, um, as we even discussed inside that video where Judah was talking about how some people are born to be servants and some people leaders. Well, most people are definitely born to be slaves, bro. And so, that means that, biblically speaking, they're born in bondage. Who frees you? The Christ. The Redeemer. Does this make sense? So, when, when America fell to a civil state of war, okay? It says it right here. The judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit... In law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens and subjects of another foreign state. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited. Yeah, there was a part in here where it said the United States can't go against the United States. Yes, exactly. That's what it just said. So it's basically saying that we're at war with each other in law. That's what it seems. Oh, I got a question. I got a question. Makes sense. Okay. Patrick, how, how, how to, I mean, if they know this war... So because of the Civil War, it opened up the 14th Amendment, which is now everyone's a citizen that's subject to the United there's, States. There's a lot of funky shit with this Civil War shit, too, man. I think, uh... I think the Civil War and the Revolutionary War might be a combination of the same war. Oh, yes. You are right on the money, brother. In fact, I highly recommend you go back to my videos, if you can, and just look up the history of the bankers. The two videos that I made on here. Well, well, I'm, I'm just, uh, just thinking that maybe, maybe the Revolutionary War and the Civil War is the exact same thing. It's the banker's war, bro. We're always under the bankers, man. Stop thinking. Of, like, that's when I learned the secret. The history of the bankers. The money changers from the Bible. The money changers. Yep. We're in a banker's war, bro. Is that, is that what uh, I have a they call it? The banker's wars? Yeah, the history of the bankers. Yep. Interesting. Ugly. Yeah. I mean, because they're in the system and they... They're in the system, and they can't be the one to stop it. They try and stop it, they'll get killed. Oh, shit. They have it's, only, it's only we, the people, that can stand up and stop it. Just like Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and all the other guys said. We give you the Constitution. Now it is up to you to hold on to it and defend it. I love this channel.
By the government employees, they have no ability to undo what they've done. We have to do it from the outside. Did, did you hear that? Yes. Because we are the sovereign. I'm going to have to send you this video. I'm going to have to actually send it to you so you can listen to it. It's subscribed to this channel. It's Robots like and Patriots. That. Oh, yeah, Pat. Pat Devine. He's, he's right on the money. He reminds me of me and where I'm going. I love that guy. I wish I could sit down and have a conversation with him for like probably a few months. It would be nice. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, a few months straight, nonstop, just literally sitting down, chilling with this guy. I feel like we're right on the several, right on the same exact paradigm and wavelength and frequency and mindset and pages of understanding. But he still teaches me yeah. so much. Of the sovereign, the nation, the land is the sovereign, and we are the sovereign key of the land because we are the walking around above ground land of the sovereign. So we have the right of inheritance from the nation. You hear that? From the sovereign that made us princes in this country. And that's what an American... Pretty much everything we just talked about. What, are you having a hard time hearing it, Ken? The Bankers Wars? No. I'm going to back it up 60 seconds. Institution. Now it is up to you to hold on to it and defend it. By the government employees, they have no ability to undo what they've done. We have to do it from the outside. Did you hear that? Yes. As government employees, they have no right to do what they've undone. It has to be us from the outside. So I'm right. Being a politician only means I'm joining them. Uh, yeah, because now you're no longer really an American. Nope, not at all. Exactly. So you don't have the same rights, so you can't do that. That's right. Yeah. Because we are the sovereignty of the sovereign. The nation, the land is the sovereign. And we are the sovereign key. So the land is sovereign. This all makes more sense. And with the buildings. All of it. All of it. Our existence. The people created the government, not the other way around. Of the land, because we are the walking around above ground land of the sovereign. So we have the right of inheritance from the nation, from the sovereign. That made us princes in this country. And that's what an American is, is a prince of the land. I'm a prince, a king, a god. I had a question. Okay. Has anybody gotten their, um, their national passport? No. You can't get it until they see you get back in. And see, that national passport that we were trying to get before, that was not the national passport we want. I said this about uh, three, four, six months ago, whatever, that the passport we really want was to be a green card, a green passport. Yeah, because I found out that you want to become an alien. You are an alien. You're not a fucking citizen to anything. You pledge allegiance to yourself. To God. Within the holy heavenly kingdom. The people. Well, the word people seems more like the word peephole for God. God is staring through our eyeballs. He, he knows everything we're doing. You know? Well, 
I'm gonna end this video on uh, the recording, and hopefully everybody enjoyed the evolution of consciousness as we currently move into the now. There'll be more things talking about, obviously law and how it pertains to us and our responsibilities as human beings being here. I think the only way to have a responsible government is to become the